Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nethling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring guests and topics that will empower you to become that confident leader and take your business and your life to the next level. Today, I want to um, have you join me in welcoming Heather Gedusko, who is um, a superstar for wellness. And let me tell you a little bit about her. She empowers others to become superstars of their lives. She was born in the 70s, raised in the 80s, earned a degree and took risk in the 90s and started a family and career in the 2000s. She lived as a super mom, juggling, as we all did, (laughs) practices, homework, running a business and loving her husband in the 2010s. And then in the 2020s, her mission is to serve as many women as possible through her signature program and book, Girl with a Game Plan. And you can see that book right behind her. She loves helping women realize they are a superstar in their lives. No matter what job you're just, you have, uh, we have a beautiful light inside us that is meant to shine brightly. Heather wants to spread the message that not every day, not every season is going to be a winning one. But when we have a game plan for life, it allows us to lead with love, shine our superstar bright and experience success. And I can't wait for you to become inspired to act and turn the page on a new season from what she will share today. She is an accomplished author, speaker, trainer, empowering women to understand and achieve their goals season after season. So as you may hear in her voice as she's talking, she is a former Philadelphia Eagles cheerleader, and she brings an Infectious energy, you should see her YouTube, and unique perspective to personal development and get our head in the game, act, and get ready to shine. I thought we'd talk about learning through losses and turning them into wins. I always talk about, you know, life isn't perfect and neither should you be. How do you get up after you fail? So. I am so excited to have Heather as my guest. So please join me in welcoming Heather Yadusko. Heather. Yes. Oh my gosh. I am so fired up after that introduction of me and the book. This is so exciting. I am so blessed to be here. And I can't wait to dive right into our content for today. Let's start shining like superstars <laughs> from right now. Let's do it. And I always start with an easy question. I might have given part of the answer away, but where do you call home? Where do you live? So I live, I was born and raised Pennsylvania girl. And yeah, yeah, I was uh, actually Berks County. I now live in uh, a little bit uh, north of that um, in the Lehigh Valley for any listeners that know Uh Pennsylvania. And yeah, I cheered for the Philadelphia Eagles way back. I started in the 1900s cheering (laughs) um, for the Eagles and it was an amazing experience. But yeah, I still am a proud... um, Pennsylvanian. Yeah. So, uh, Steeler fan. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Black and yellow, black and yellow. That's right. But the 
um, but very familiar with the area. My dad's older brother lived in um, Upper Darby. And, oh, okay. Um, yeah. So visited there a few times. Actually, with funny story, we took uh, when we were growing up. We had a high low camper, which a high low camper is, is it looks like um, those pop up kind of campers. Yeah. That um, were tents. But yes. it was hard um, sided. And so when you were driving, you didn't have as much wind resistance. So we liked that. Uh, yeah. Easier to transport your trailer. But um, we were driving downtown Philadelphia and had a stoplight and we're stopped. And there's this group of people hanging on the street. And they, they lean in the car window and they said, is a bunch of midgets living in that car? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, it just wasn't something that was seen. Obviously, <gasps> we had push a button, the car, go, the, the, um, yeah, yeah. I totally through. remember those. Those were awesome. <laughs> so funny. What a funny story. But, yeah. So that, that, and that was right down by the stadium. So it was interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I cheered when it was still, that stadium was still there and that is no longer there. Um, so yeah, I, I cheered in a, a part of history that doesn't ex exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have those kind of places now as <laughs> right. we mature into our next season here. Yeah, that's right. So how did you end up being that Philadelphia Eagles cheerleader? And, and what was the biggest takeaway? I think everybody has like in their minds imagery of what it's like to be a cheerleader for a football team. The Steelers yeah. never had them. So <laughs> it didn't ever have. Yeah, that it dream, was, but... it was just as, um, exciting as it looks to be part of the game day excitement. Um, and, you know, just having that experience uh, from, from, well, to answer your first part of your question is what, what brought me to become a Philadelphia Eagles cheerleader. Uh, it was something that, you know, my, my whole family was Philadelphia Eagles fans. However, that wasn't the reason I wanted to be a cheerleader. It was more of that. That's where my path kind of led me to and my group of friends um, at the time. So I was a new graduate of Westchester university, which is right outside of Philadelphia of like about 20, 25 minutes. And I was, not just a health and physical education, um, kinesiology major, but I was also a minor in dance. And oh. if you know anything about NFL cheering, there's a lot, it's mostly dance, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when I graduated, a group of my girlfriends that I had danced with at Westchester, we decided to go down and just have this amazing experience. And honestly, I didn't have any big goal of making the team, quite honestly. I just wanted to go experience the excitement of an open audition. So open auditions, anybody can go. So, you know, I have very vivid, vivid memories of standing outside of the vet stadium with a group of women that all, you know, looked amazingly physically fit, gorgeous, full of energy, and just having no idea what to expect. But at the same time, just being very open to the experience. And I think because I went in so open and just kind of carefree and just so excited for that experience without any, um, you know, feeling of, of worrisome of what the mm -hmm. outcome was going to happen that day is I made it, I made it through that first round of cuts that day. And I continued to make the next round and round and round. And before you knew it, I remember calling my parents on the way home, going through the turnpike exchange, exchange the Pennsylvania turnpike saying, mom and dad, guess what? I made the team. And, um, it was quite exciting. And, um, I was married. I had just been newly married at the time. So, um, yeah, my husband was excited he he could go to the games now and see, see his wife cheer so that was super just an amazing experience and then you know the takeaway from being that cheerleader um it just you exude confidence when you're when you're in that spotlight you hold yourself a little higher you stand a little taller you have that energy and that's carried over into all all parts of my life since being a cheerleader yeah. It's funny the things that we do when we're young. You know, I I um I was married um I guess maybe a year and I saw an ad <laughs> kind of the same as you and in 
Pittsburgh was introducing a soccer team, indoor soccer team. And they said they were having this contest called Hot Legs. <laughs> and so I said, what the heck? And just like you, I didn't have any anticipation of winning. I just thought, this is something to write down in my, you know, journal. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, I won. So then I went into the, um, the I was a, you know, the local at the airport kind of thing. And I, um, then we actually, all of the winners of those local had to go and march across the igloo um, or the, um, the ice hockey <laughs> area that we yeah. covered in a bathing suit. And it was freezing cold because even though the ice wasn't there, it was still underneath. Right. And we marched around in our bathing suits and, and did our interviews and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't win that, but it was like, oh my goodness, you know, how many people can say yeah. they took that chance? Yeah. So, and what a fun experience, you know, know. And, and putting yourself out there, you know, outside yeah. your comfort zone is so important throughout life. And, and I think that's the message that I was trying to get to in a side street kind of way was that. If you go through life without the worry and the anxiety of having to be win or to make a get on the team, if you will, for your particular yeah. thing, um, it is actually more fun. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, and that you know the the um, the subtitle of my book is from bench warmer to superstar, right? So when we're when we're living life like that bench warmer, we're just kind of watching everything happen around us, watching everyone else take risks. And the idea is let's get up off of that bench. Let's stop just scrolling on social media. Let's stop, you know, having those to do things that we actually never get up and do, but let's, yeah. let's live with conviction and one of the roles that we take on in the book is the cheerleader role, right? So you don't have to have been an NFL cheerleader, or high school cheerleader, or even have liked to cheer in your life to be your own cheerleader, right? So being your own cheerleader is going to be having those affirmations because that's what we do on the sidelines. We have those affirmations for the team to score before they score, to win before they win, to play defense. So if we can start our day having these affirmations and telling ourselves what we want to have happen before it happens. Wow. That's going to raise that energy so much and create those opportunities for us to step into those, um, zones of discomfort, but we can do it with confidence. And it's really the life lesson is always that the small things that you do add up to the bigger things that, and you don't, it, it's so great because you don't even notice it as it's happening. And then all of a sudden time passes and you, and you've accomplished what your goal was. And, and I, again, yeah. I think people stress over the big bodacious goal that they have and, and don't think and plan, what are the small things and steps that I can take to get yeah. to Yeah. Yes. That's why I love the game plan. You know, I'm a project manager um, by trade in my past when I retired. And so you have to have a game plan. I mean, you do, you just need a game plan. Yeah. Really in every, in every aspect, you, you have to have a game plan. And in this specific girl with a game plan, um, one of how to be the star player of your life doesn't have to necessarily align with your job title or your career choice either. So kind of taking a look at, at that inward spirit and the, what I call the superstar is leaning into those quiet whispers. So you know, while being a project manager or while being, um, you know, uh, a mom, you can still have other wants and needs and find a purpose that lights you up. Um, I feel blessed because I am a wellness coach, speaker, author, and I'm able to combine both, but you don't necessarily have to do that to live in your purpose. And you don't have to have the same purpose, purpose and passion throughout the entire lifespan, right? You can change and you can mold and you can grow. So what I guide um, women through, and this is, you know, I, I wrote it in a, in a voice of a woman to a woman, but really it's, it can be for anyone, but mm -hmm. to really like sit with yourself and think what really lights me up? Where do I feel like I'm in that flow state? And, um, you know, as, as a, um, a health coach and wellness coach, a lot of women come to me and they want to fix, you know, the, 
the fat on their arms or you know, their, you know, their belly doesn't, isn't looking the way they want to. And they're not coming to me with a place of like, I love my body and I want to get it stronger. They're coming from a place of hate. Yeah. So if we can flip that around and think, what can I, I do to foster that love, whether it be I'm going to plant an amazing garden, whether it be I'm going to work on, um, you know, creating a, a nook in my basement that I can sit and relax and, and read my books. It doesn't have to be these noteworthy, big, you know, newsworthy uh, passions that we have that light us up. Um, so it's, it's all about finding that light. And then the biggest part of that is how, what, what are you doing in that passion? That's going to help inspire someone else, because that's what truly really shines the brightest light. And that's what got me going last year when I was writing this book, because I was, I've never been an author. I don't, <laughs> I didn't know the first thing about writing a book, publishing a book and, um, dealt with a lot of imposter syndrome, right? But that mm. feeling of knowing that once I get this published, sure, it's going to be a great accomplishment for me, but I'm going to be able to help one, at least one woman out there. It was my goal. I'm going to help one woman. She's going to read this book and it will have a ripple effect. And that that's been my goal. And, I, you know, I think a couple things that we can unpack there. First of all, don't be alone. Don't try to do it alone. You yes. know, have accountability partners, uh, have a community. And, and that's where I love, you know, the whole, the coaching piece is because it introduces you to a community of like-minded with similar goals. And, and you don't have those people that will be very happy to tell you why you can't do it and why you shouldn't do it and, right. and not be there to support and cheer you on as you make those small Yes. Meaningful yeah. Moves. Yeah. Having coaches in our lives are so important. And, you know, your podcast is serving as an assistant coach for your listeners. Yeah. So when we think of the word coach and assistant coaches, like we have to be our own coach. We have to, I had to be that one to sit my booty down in my chair and actually <laughs> write the book. Right. But to do that, I, I hired a coaching school to help me learn how to self-publish. I hired an editor to help me edit my book. So um, you don't always have to have these real life people because we live in this beautiful world of technology that we can curate assistant coaches in our social media fight feeds. We can listen to podcasts. We can read books, all great assistant coaches that cost us not very much to invest in ourselves. So whenever you're working with the folks these last 25 years of training people and instructing them on how to love their bodies and themselves again, I, talk to me about what you learned and, and especially now with our people going through, gone through the p pandemic and the whole mindset of some people in some ways it was eye-opening and revealing and wonderful and in other ways people got out of the social interaction type of thing that i think is so important for our well-being yeah it's it's great to be able to love ourselves individually but how do you um how do you make sure that all of the things you're making for your physical body to look better, you're not forgetting about that mental state that's necessary yeah. too? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it, it, for me, in, it starts with awareness and it starts for taking that hard look at ourselves for where we are right now. And with the game plan, I call it the off season. What do athletes do in the off season? They're not working towards anything. They're kind of taking that inventory of where did I come from to get me to this day and time and where, where, what's happening here. And when I understand that, then I can move forward and set some goals and have some, some passions and purposes, but really it's in that awareness that we can look at ourselves and say, you know what? I might've gained some weight. You know what? I stopped. I don't have a workout program. I stopped reading fiction books and I used to love that. 
and looking at all those things and because it's very easy to see all the things we're not first, right? So we'll start there. So looking at all of those things that we're not or that were too heavy or, or things like that is to have that grace with ourselves and to say, you know what? It's okay. I'm okay. I'm here. I am living. I am breathing. And I am going to be a hundred percent okay with where I am right now. And that comes back to that self-love, right? Mm -hmm. So holding on to anger or guilt because we allowed ourselves to, you know, eat too much over the holidays or completely, you know, watch Netflix marathons you know, day after day, whatever it is to just say, you know what? Okay. This is where I'm at right now. Where do I want to go? And then start to navigate that plan. And that plan that we navigate is in that preseason where we're taking a look at how we can set ourselves up mentally. How can we set ourselves up spiritually and physically to reach those goals? And when we do that, we place these specific Actions that we can take. And when we, you know, we have these decisions every single day that, and that's where our bad habits come from, right? It's those decisions that we make over and over and over again, that are not putting us towards where we want to go. They're actually creating a deficit and, mm -hmm. and taking us back. So the awareness helps with just your self-belief, your self-love and the alignment of that mind, body, and spirit. Very true. Social media has been part of our lives for many, many years now. And how do you think it has affected us um, in terms of wellness? Um, and is it getting any better or <laughs> is it worse? Yeah. Well, we could probably have a really, really long conversation on that. Uh, so I, I have, I'm a mom of three. My oldest is 21. Actually, she'll be 22 tomorrow. Oh. And then I have a 20 year old and a 14 year old. So, you know, looking at their youth and their, um, childhood growing up in the world of social media. And as a mom, we did push it back as, you know, pretty far. My kids didn't have it as young children, but now seeing how they interact with it, um, and as, and myself and my husband, um, it definitely has its detrimental effects and the, the, what I've come to believe is it's not going anywhere, right? We live in this world of technology. We live in this world of social media. So as the user, right? We are the user. Social media shouldn't be using us. So mm -hmm. as the user, let's curate, like I was saying before, you can curate your social media to be amazing, impactful, motivational, inspirational speakers, coaches, whatever it is you're passionate about, start to follow them. If you love to knit, follow knitters that are making amazing projects that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm inspired to do this. When I open my Instagram or Facebook, I'm seeing you know my friends and family, but I'm also seeing amazing coaches, inspirational speakers who are going to speak to me, that are going to lift me up. And here's the thing, mindless scrolling, yeah, I get it. I do it too. But what I try to do, and I'm human, I'm not perfect, but I try to schedule it at a certain time, or I'll set a timer and say, you know what, I'm going to be doing some mindless scrolling because for me, I enjoy watching funny things too. Right? Yeah. It's, it's good doesn't. fun, yeah. but just be careful of how much time you spend there. Um, I, I, definitely been known to send my friends like reel after reel after reel. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to stop. Um, so it's, it's the balance. It's the ebb and flow. It's an ebb and flow of social media, just like it is with life. Yeah. So that's sure. my short answer. Yeah. And I love that you suggest, you know, setting the timer. I, you know, I, I know we do that for my grandsons and, and it's so easy to think, oh my God, hours have passed. It's like watching Netflix. Hours yes. Have passed. <laughs> yes. Episode yeah. after episode, you get so drawn in. So having that reminder or, you know, maybe uh, absolutely, if you, if you don't want to have a clock, maybe make a, a brownie <laughs> or something yes. where you have to get up 
and take them out of the oven. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, that's a great idea. I love that. So what is your game plan for 2024? Yeah. Great question. Uh, so my game plan, um, as you know, last year, my game plan was to write the book, the game plan. I leaned into those quiet whispers and I made it happen. Um, so my word last year was published, right? So I'm, I've recently, probably within the last four years, I've always started the year off with a word, right? So last year it was published and that was my goal. And again, having that purpose, passion, at the forefront of your mind as the star player, you're going to set your days up to help you get to that goal, right? Help you get to that word. So this year, my word is freedom. So I am, um, it's a little bit bigger, more expansive than the word publish, but I want to just be free from the self-doubt that I have uh, because even though, and here's the funny thing is, you know, someone looks at me and they think, oh, wow, she was a Philadelphia Eagles cheerleader. She owned her own gym. She wrote a book. She must have amazing confidence. And I am confident, but on the other side of that confidence is a lot of negative self-talk that I have really learned how to play defense against. And that's the opponent mm. in the game plan is learning how to play def defense. But my goal this year and moving forward is to get rid of some of those negative yeah. self-thoughts. So not just playing defense anymore, but really clearing up that field so it's more star players, less opponents. So freedom of the negative self-talk, freedom to financially be able to move throughout my my worlds without worry and fear. Um, as you as I said, I have two kids in college. <laughs> So finances are are yeah. tight and my up and coming ballerina daughter she you know wants to do all of these intensives so you know having that freedom financially is really important to me and then freedom to move throughout this life without concern of feeling worry for um as a mom you worry for your adult kids a lot and that's yeah. something newer to me um, so having that freedom of worry and just surrendering that, um, you know, my husband and I have done the best we can to raise our kids and, and just to be there for them and not try to fix all of their problems anymore. So I think one of the most satisfying thing for me is my daughters are in their thirties now. So my oldest yeah. has two kids and then my youngest is 33, um, this year and, Okay, And whenever I look at what they've done and accomplished, it gives me just such a lift to my heart to know, yeah. okay, I didn't do so bad. You know, we don't have a rule book. We don't have a guidebook. We don't have a game plan a lot of yeah. times raising our kids. But I think if we just trust in ourselves and in God. Um, Absolutely. Out, yeah, it is. It is probably the most joyful, blissful feeling is when your kids that you feel like you've like, okay, I, th I think they're going to be okay. They're making some really good choices. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, it absolutely is. And, and as you said, like, yeah, like when you're raising your kids for the moms of little ones out there, if they were listening, like you do the best you can. And if you're leading with love, it's going to work out. And when you know better, you do better, but at any moment in time. And that, you know, that's just good advice for all of us. Like, mm -hmm. let's do the best we can. And honestly, that's the advice my mom has always given me is, mm -hmm. was that the best you could do? And if so, mm -hmm. then that is truly all you can do. So, you know, asking yourself right now, am I doing the best in my wellness, in my career, in my personal life? And if not, where can I, again, it goes back to that awareness. Where can I make some changes to move me into a place mm -hmm. of more bliss, more joy, more love? So how do we live as superstars though? Because, and again, when we think of superstars, I, I want the audience to not think that superstars are perfect. Um, you know, if you go back to our football analogy, and I love football, there, there are people that are star players, but if you look at those star players, they didn't do it alone. They had mm -hmm. people around them that supported them, that 
gave them the the right moves to be able to grow and and to succeed in what they're doing and i think that's what a superstar to me is mm -hmm. is that person that gets up when they fall yes yeah absolutely yeah so you know to shine like a superstar it, it has to start with that awareness and through that awareness is where we get our faith you know, our faith in ourselves, our faith for whatever it is that you're believing that is bigger than you. And then through that faith, then you're able to take action, right? You're able to take, take action for what you feel that no one else is telling you. Like there's no perfect diet. There's no before and after pictures of your life. Take action for what is important to you. Seek out the coaches to give you help. Seek out those trainers to give you help. And then through that action, you're going to get stronger. And when do we get the most strong is through the struggle, through the losses, through the obstacles mm -hmm. to not quit, right? Failure only occurs when we quit. So mm -hmm. if we just say, you know what? Today wasn't a great day. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. This happened. I got worrisome. I got fearful. Okay, what can I do to be resilient? So it's through that action, I get stronger. And it's through that authentic look at ourselves. Am I winning? Am I losing? And I'm going to come back either way. And I'm going to become come back stronger. Is That is what creates that superstar yeah. mindset and um, knowing that we can take a timeout, right? That's what, that's what teams do. You need to take a timeout. You need to refresh, regenerate, relax, and then come back again stronger. So again, really taking that game plan idea and looking at, okay, for this season, I'm going to, I'm going to first go into my off season, become aware. I'm going to preseason it. I'm going to get very clear on what actions I want to take. And then for eight weeks, I'm going to dig deep and I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to win. I'm going to lose, but most of all, I'm going to grow. And at the end, you know, I start the book, like you may not accomplish what you set out to do. That's not really the point. The point is the growth in the, in, in the action and learning and growing. And of course, shining that love out. So yeah, acting, there you go. Acting through the fear. Yeah. Yeah. I like to say, you know, when we think of superstars, like you said, it's like thinking like of those perfect beings, whether it's a rock star or mm -hmm. that star sports player. Um, but you know, even those people, they have, they have their own battles that they fought. And a lot of times we look at those superstars and see, think that it's easy, but mm -hmm. there's so much hard work and there's so much defeat that goes in before they see their name in lights. And for many of us, superstars, we're not going to see our names and lights, but what we can see is that beautiful light shining from within us that is going to inspire others. Absolutely. Well, we only have time for one rapid fire question. And that is, can you explain what allowed you, uh, your superstar to be benched? You, you said in your book, you allowed your superstar to be benched in 2020. Benched. And yes. So yeah. Why, so why was that? So, um, yeah. So as you can tell, I'm a very energetic, highly <laughs> passionate individual, right? So when, uh, when 2020 came around and, you know, I think it benched a lot of us, yeah. uh, because we were not prepared. We did not have a game plan for what was in store for us. And it hit many of us at different levels of adversity and grief and loss. Yeah. And for me, I, I kind of lost myself in being there for my, my oldest, who was a 2020 uh, graduate of high school oh. uh, and being in Pennsylvania, they shut Nothing. down schools. Nothing. So that was, you know, I, I, I can feel my body tensing up to this day talking about it, but it was, it was just very overwhelming, um, sad. And she was an athlete and my son was right behind her. So he was a junior and it was just, you know, it was, it was unfortunate and lots of emotions for a 17 year old uh, going through that. And I was trying to show up for her. And at the same time, I had this thriving, amazing gym, uh, that was ordered to close as well. So 
in dealing with all of that, I still wanted to show up for my gym community because we were like family and I showed up live every single day on Facebook, on my sweat, like a girl page, all the videos are still there. And we worked out at, at 1030 every single day that we were shut down. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful thing. We shared raw emotions. I cried on the feeds. I laughed. I, you know, I would read these um, cards that would set us out on to the day with hope. Um, and in all of that, showing up for everyone else, I kind of let myself go unknowingly, not on purpose. Yeah. Right. And that's usually the way it happens. We yeah. unknowingly are taking care of, you know, and, and women, especially we have all of these different things we're juggling. And I just, uh, finally, it was what the fall of 2020, my gym was open. We sent my daughter away to college fully masked and there was still fear. And the other big thing too, for me was sensing that fear and hate that was in the world at the time really, yeah. really got to me. And, um, I think I just, I, I lost that loving feeling for, for what I love to do. And that's lift each other up and build each other up. And I, I needed to, I told myself that I, needed to close my gym and I closed the doors. My gym community was very surprised. And I took that year of 2021 and just really took a step back and tried to remember who am I outside of being a mom? Because, you know, my, my second, my son, my second son was leaving for college that year too. Um, so outside of being a mom with three kids at home, outside of being a gym owner, who was I was, and through that awareness, again, it comes back to that awareness. I could hear those whispers, those quiet nudges saying, Hey, you know what? This is a great idea. And it wasn't until I, you know, I, I still trained people in my basement. And one of the girls I trained, I was saying, Yeah, I'm like, I have this idea. And she's, as I, I, I think it would make a great book. And she's like, Well, go do it. And you know what? That's all I needed. I just needed another soul, another person to say, Go do it. So speak to people about those quiet musings, because sometimes you just need that nudge, not just from your inner spirit, but sometimes those friends, and it doesn't even have to be a friend. It could be someone at the grocery store line, right? <laughs> so be social, open up your heart because you never know what those open hearted moments will lead to. And I am so excited that I was able to turn that loss, right? Mold it, reshape it. And now I feel back and so strong physically, so strong mentally, and most importantly, so strong spiritually. And I don't think I would be in this place that I am now had I not going gone through that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just a call to action for all the listeners out there is look at the last five years, right? It's 2024 year now. Think about where you were at 2019. How did the last four to five years shape you? And mm -hmm. are you okay with it? Are you sitting on the bench? Is it time for you to rise up and start taking action? And for most of us, yeah, let's do it. Let's take action because honestly, Vicki, that's how I think that we change this world and help mm -hmm. it grow the right way is that we do what inspires us. And through that, we shine our light and we inspire others. Absolutely. Well, time has flown by and it yeah. is time for me to share my slide that has your contact information. So those that have been just listening if you haven't been taking notes, uh, go grab that paper and pencil to be able to get the contact information for Heather. And if you are watching, you can go ahead and do a screenshot. But as always, everything will be on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. As well as my findyourleadershipconfidence.com. All righty. So the website is www.heather.com. And I'll spell it G-I-D-U-S-K-O dot com. Heather mm -hmm. G-I-D-U-S-K-O Gidusko. And for Facebook, you can go to Heather dot Gidusko Fitness. Yeah. LinkedIn is Heather dash Gidusko. Instagram is Heather Gidusko. And YouTube is at Heather. So she made it easy for you to yes. just use her name and find her, which is always wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
I'll let Heather talk to you about her call to action. Yes. All right. So call to action. This book is where it's at. And this book is not just a book you read. It is a call to action in itself. There is a lot of blank spaces in this book because you are pulling out that awareness, that faith in yourself and putting it on the pages. You are creating your own game planner for you to see through for eight weeks. Here's the really cool part is starting this week in my free, completely free open um, Facebook group. Um, it's called Girl with a Game Plan Community. And I'm going to do lives to start coaching um, the individuals in the group through the pages of this book. Completely complimentary here for you, because again, this is what lights me up, is helping others find their inner lights, find their superstar mindset so they can go out and inspire the world as well. So the way you can find yourself to that community is you could obviously go to Facebook and just search girl with a game plan community. Okay. You can also find it on my website. Uh, it'll just say join community on any of the pages that you see there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just awesome. free to join, join me in there. And even if you're not interested. So here's the thing. Even if you're a little bit like, I don't know if I'm ready for this, that's okay. Join the group at anyways and start to bring yourself into that mode of feeling like I can do this. I got this. All right. Cause I also show, I also share motivation in there as well. Perfect. So that is my call to action. And of course you can get the book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Excellent. As always, thank you so much for being a wonderful guest, sharing wonderful information, helpful information and insights and telling us how we can bring out the superstar in all of us just by having a game plan. Yay! As always, I remind everyone that life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nethling. Signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.